too yeah, late. He, he has to be very careful because there's always the fissure to protect the uh, to protect whoever he lassos. And there's always going to be the follow-up shackle if he gets caught with the fissure. IG just farming the neutrals here. You're going to find a nice stack of LGDNs. And this is right when Alchemist is starting to level his Grievous Greed. So this really, really hurts. He had the one point for a while. Steal, steal your enemy, enemy stacks. That's part of the plan. Steal everything. More and more economic damage for IG. It's 10 to 9 in terms of kills, but you look at the gold graph, the experience graph. It's over 10k gold lead, over 12k experience lead. IG yeah, and it's, it's command really of this game. For them. The solo mid alchemist hasn't really done much for his team. He's only had 3 assists so far and 30 minutes in, he only has a shadow blade. And this was after two heroes rotated mid at level 1. Yeah, they ganked the TA twice even. They ganked the TA, 430. Even though he died, he went 0-2. Just showing a better ability to find farm this game. And a lot of that is uh, the supporting I cast he has. One of the main reason he was able to cope with even with the gank, the two ganks, was because of the item build he ran for this game. The drums and threads, I think, was very crucial. Yeah, it, it, and the Ogre Club as well, just going straight for the BKB. Yeah, that, the, the time that he didn't die was because of his item. Oh, oh no, YYF, he's gonna find Pycat. Wanted that last creep and he will pay. Gets caught out. Now flame right back, he'll force death himself towards freedom, but there's another trap. The chase will continue, 430 comes in. He's got a BKB, able to dodge away from the fissure, and now at long last, it looks like Pycat is gonna be caught out. Another force death, are they ever gonna run out? Doesn't matter, they're all getting blown up in a hurry now. 430, shackled the Chuang, but they've already found two. Is it going to matter? Acid sprays there, they're gonna try and fight. Trap connects on two. Now the power shot, waving over the top. IG surging forward, waving forward. They'll find four. This is after a buyback, and now the trap on the Brax. He's on the run, trying to find the openings, but they just can't do it. Double buyback, they still lose four, and it uh, looks like they, they won't defend the tower. They, even they messed up at the start. Uh, they used the telekinesis on the wrong timing, but they still gotten such a favorable trade. Uh, even with the four staffs, LGD go double four staff. Normally, you'd hope that would keep your carry alive, but. Uh, that, that was the last game yeah. where the four stuffs kept them alive, but this game, two four stuffs isn't enough. I hate to I hate to keep on talking about Obsidian Destroyer as a hero, Outworld Destroyer, because I love the hero. I think he's fantastic, but another another weakness of his. I, I think I think Mushi agrees to you that that hero is fantastic. <laughs> uh, if Mushi agrees with me, then I must be right, Winter. But another weakness of the hero, he's just not that survivable. I mean, you can you can use Astral Imprisonment. That's good. For early yeah, games. It comes, it comes down to the fact that the build he went for this game, if he would have went for the carry build with a BKB and a Hex, he would be able to stand and fight in the team team engage. Also, he could maybe just find, find kills so they don't have to fight 5v5 is the other yeah. possibility. YWF's going to come in again. Oh, BKB, he dodges the shackle and then he jumps forward. He's going to bring Brax in. He's brought a fresh treat for Joe and Joe happily collects it. Chuan's hungry too though, let's see if he can find any openings. There's gonna be a pretty well, big fissure well, by Misery. Chuan's got Shackle, he's gonna look to jump in now. Sorry, Windrun actually, they're all coming forward. G in trouble, Echo was good, but is it gonna be enough? It doesn't feel like it. G trying to man fight his way out of this one, but two under farms, he will melt. IG overwhelming LGDN, 31 minutes in. 17 to nine, they now lead by nearly 20,000 gold. 25,000 experience. This feels almost unwinnable for LGDN. And there's your completed Eye of Scotty and Joe. Winter, lest we forget, Joe had a horrible time in the laning stage. He did not farm well. Uh, he was driven back yeah, to his tower multiple due to times. the fact of the tri lane, which went so horribly wrong for them. But they rotated the bat to the jungle and they gave, gave the bottom lane to the morphling to catch up. And now Joe's looking at the tower here. IG in command of game two. They want to force the game three and they may be able to do so. Lurking on the racks, can they bring it down before there's any resistance? LGDN, so far back, they just aren't even going to put up a fight. They'll sack one lane of Rex. They'll look... They can't. They can't fight it anymore. They can't fight now? I don't think they can fight 5v5. I don't even know if they can fight 5v4. Not when YWF's on this path. He's going to jump it again. 14-37. Out of position and instantly brought down. Easy pickings. Now G, next in line. He'll get flame break towards the fight. Not where he wants to be, Joe. I have Skady available. He's going to work on G. Look at the rate he drops that even. With his ultimate up, he will be able to force that to freedom, but IG. Easy kills, and then they just back off. And for LGDN, so many buybacks, so much ground lost. These, it's even worse than what these graphs show. Yeah, it, it came down to the point where I think the turning point of the game was how they abused the 
we call plus replicate and how they move how they move the morphing to the bottom lane at the start when everything went wrong for them. It was all about the those decisions that won them the mid game. It's also the fact that they had the option to do that. Because you look at what what say yeah, LG. If if it's another hero soloing bot which can't jungle, they can't do this. Or if they had a triumph protector, you can't really leave him <laughs> solo against that top lane. I, I mean he, you can leave him at the tower, but he won't do anything. Keeper of the Light can actually oh, farm the stacks. I, I, I think he can do. He can still armor his teammates. He just has to stay at the tower, constantly armor the other lanes. That's all. Right, but Keeper of the Light can actually steal the neutral camps and get some farm and levels, and that's what we saw from and Fate. More, more importantly, def defend the tower with his Illuminate. That as well. Well, Trian can defend the tower with armor, but for how long? We'll have to see. As usual, YYF, goes Firefly, Batman. Batman on the move. The bat signal's in the air. He's flying high, he's flying proud. Did he find an opening? Not just yet, but he'll fish for one. He's, he's striking fear in everyone. And LGD, they're gonna try to set up a masterful initiation here, but it's gotta be perfect. BKB for Joe, he'll pop it in time. The Shackle will do nothing. Brax foiled in this particular engagement. Now G comes in, he'll chase down Faith, but we'll keep an eye on YYF, see who he goes for next. In the end, won't go for anyone. They've cornered PyCat, that's the big prize, but actually it might be IG who are cornered. 430, pops his BKB, slicing and dicing in the... Just helpless outworld destroyer can't do a thing against the BKBs. Echo by misery won't be in time. The GGs fly forth. IG absolutely run rampant, run rough shot over LGD, and they'll take game two in winter. We're headed to a game three in this replay cast. Yeah, this game was all down to those decision makings by IG, which was very very good. They maneuvered and changed when adapted to the situation they were in. They didn't like oh screw this. Our try lane is. Our training is totally destroyed. We are in lots of trouble, but they did the necessary adjustment to allow them to come back to the game. And I also liked their draft better. Getting the Bat Rider early, getting a strong solo for 4:30. Yeah, you were you were asking you were asking me about what do you give up for the research? I would say this was the game, Bat Rider. You give up research, you get the Bat Rider. It's a good trick. <laughs> In the end, IG, they'll take game two. Guys, it's a best of three. It's a replay cast immediately. Well, not immediately, but shortly after the conclusion of this replay cast. Uh, we will, of course, have your next live best of three. Winter will be joining me for that one, I believe. Orange versus LGD China. That's coming up a little bit later this evening. But before that, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, it'll be LGD International versus IG. Your final match in this best of three. Stay tuned.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game three of LGD International versus IG. Unfortunately, we don't get to do the draft for the first couple of minutes because we have our game one of the live match coming up. Arj versus LGD trying to in just an hour, and this is apparently a longer replay. So, had to skip the draft. We'll start from here. Winter, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm good. I am can't wait for the live games, but now we, we're stuck with this game first. But if you look at the IG draft, they have Conquer Shadow, Conquer Shadow Demon and Morphling, which uh, has a lot of killing power early on. And if you compare to the heroes of LGD INT, they, their heroes need to have a lot more levels before they can be active on the map. Yeah, they have a very strong five-man lineup. If they get to the mid-game or the late-game... Yeah. If they can get to the mid-game, a couple, uh, a couple of more levels on the Dark Sky and the Sun King, they, are re they have a really, really strong mid-game. But early game is definitely in IG's favor. I'd actually be very worried if I'm IG if it gets to that point because you look at their team and a lot of single target supports, a lot of heroes that clockwork, yeah. Kunkka kind of fall off. If, if you're talking about Shadow Demon and Rubik, bottom lane, bottom huge lane. clash. The boat comes in, 4:30. That was a big sideswipe. Now 14:37, just trying to get out of there, but he gets pulled back in by Chuan, thrown in. He'll pop under a sandstorm. Cogs are available if he can find the mana, which right now 14:37 does not have. He's on the run, he'll head north. Now he's gonna juke into the trees, what a sensational juke. Now he's got backup, Chuan is gonna yeah, go down. You? IG looking to turn this one around with the torrent. The disruption combo is there, connects on Pycat, who throws away his own life. Now 1437 in again. Is it gonna be G who snowballs this one? He leaps in, he clips another. Now he'll back yeah, that up. Was, that was really, really good play from the Sand King, from 1437. And, well, for the time being, while that was happening, it looks like a tier 1 top went down fairly recently. Not sure who claimed that, but Joe is your lead farmer. That's some good news for IG. They've gone for the Morph lead again. So, for IG, it, I, I didn't feel the Morph lead did much in game 1, but they feel yeah, otherwise. It was, it was because of... Uh, I think the game 2 that, yeah, the game 2... Oh, game 2, excuse lead. me. Yeah. Game 2, they won it because of the decisions and the strategical movements on the map. Not. It's not more of the... But the Morphling gave them the presence all, all over the map with his ultimate. Let's see if the, let's see if he can have that presence this game. Doesn't have the Keeper of the Light on his side. Zhou will be a little bit more restricted. Yeah. I, I was talking about having Shadow Demon and Rubik on the same team. Uh, you usually only see either one of those in the same team. Because of the fact that if you have both on the same team, you, you lack a lot of damage that your supports can dish out. If you compare it to... If you have a Shadow Demon or Lina or Rubik Lina, Shadow Demon and Rubik together, they are sort of both set up supports. Yeah, they are, and they don't offer you that much AoE, which is a bit of a concern when you're up against the lineup that it's, is. It's like you have the two supports that, that basically does the same thing. But well, they both, they both like, it's like, it's like having a, br a blonde and a brunette. They're both beautiful. Uh, you can go on a date with them, but end of the day, you have to, you have to choose one winter. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the best no. example. No. <laughs> Well, I guess if they're, if they're freewheeling gals and not intent on locking you down, you can have both. But generally, you can only have one. Yeah, true. Unless, unless there's something you'd like to tell your girlfriend right now on the stream. Is there no, another woman, I Winter? Uh, I don't want to get in trouble. I prefer not to go there. Yeah, God's, God's has already gotten you in a lot of trouble with the, the booth yeah. babes at Armageddon land. He still, he still owes me dim sum for that. He has your dim sum for a lot of things, I'm sure, but while that was, <laughs> while we were busy talking about that, IG just sitting back and farming, and you look at LGDN, no neutral stacking. You know, the one thing that's interesting is, if you look at most of the Western teams, they will, especially teams yep. like the Alliance. When when they pick Gyrocopter, they focus a lot on stacking the Ancients. And we haven't, we've seen hardly any of that from LGDN, uh, or from because IG they were, for that they were busy farming away the neutrals, they have supports like Chen and Daxia. Sand King, generally you want to go around the map trying to look for openings for kills, so they don't really have the best hero set up for constantly stacking the creeps unless the Chen wants to commit one of his creeps to the Ancients all the time to stack it. Yeah, and, and he for the moment doesn't want to do that. Smoke up a misery, now hits level 5, pretty decent level progression for him, considering that it seems like he's been fairly involved. Of course, we did hop in 3 minutes late, but uh, score now 4-2 to two for IG and they'll sit back and uh, just play the waiting game for the time being. I imagine they'll be looking for a few key items. Uh, and for LGD, well, they're going to look to fight early. BKB will be the choice for Pycat, and he's going to be rushing that. And for G, we'll see what he goes for, but I imagine something like the drum, something that helps him fight very, very soon. 
Yeah, Slug is the hero that he doesn't really need too much of items to to do a lot in the fights, especially against support. Supports are really, really vulnerable to him. If the Slug gets early levels, he just needs levels to take out the supports in a fight. And for IG, could yeah, like you said, they could they have some they also have some heroes that are pretty squishy. You catch out of here like Shadow Demon and Rubik, and they don't have any backup. They will melt. They do have some yeah. escape mechanisms, they the, but they have the boat to help them survive against that. We'll see if it's going to be enough. G just aggressive position. He wants to force some supports to this top lane. Yeah. And while he's doing that, Pycatch just farming away bottom. What do you think? Do you think it's something that they want to do now? At the start of the game, usually LGD is very, very aggressive. I think they're fine to to take it mid game, yeah. late game. It's like if, game if one. If you look at, if you look at, yeah, all the games, these three games, they've been playing a lot more passive than they used to play. It just you look at as and you look at what the draft they had in in game one and game three, and I would say in both of these games they have the better late game. Simply, well, I, I'm not guaranteed, but I would say if you take it late, their lineup is a little more comfortable there. Whereas IG. Maybe they can win late, but there's more pressure on IG to make something happen, and they certainly feel that pressure. They'll smoke up and they'll head straight towards the bottom lane. Four hero smoke this early on, with the bottom lane pushed all the way past the river, and then the mid lane at the river. At the river, it seems a little bit desperate almost to do it this early. Yeah, they have been doing this like even in the last the last game. Again, it's normally LGDN who go for this style of gank, and LGD yeah. is predicting this movement. They're going to be leading the way with, with G of all heroes. Probably the perfect one. Faith will be the first one spotted out. Now a leap. Catches out 430. He walks into a horrible position. Call down to fly there as well. Could be a great fight. The boat comes through. Doesn't look like it's going to do a whole lot. Chuan in the end. On the run, Misery giving chase to him. They do pick off the Shadow Demon, and now Chuan looks to TP away. Can they bring him down in time? Just able to escape by the skin of his teeth. Now the chase on the pie cat, however. Replicates there, but a beautiful burrow strike. Not quite sufficient. Epi being channeled, but Joe just able to get out of range. They lose their gyrocopter, but they may get three when it's all said and done, or even four at that. No, Joe able to get away. and uh, Not four in the end, because the uh, Rubik does barely TP away, but they will leap He's in. Gonna die. Catch out, Joe. <laughs> Disruption on the Slark. Not on the the Morphling. Trying to buy time for him, but the burrow strike. Oh, no mana for it. Doesn't matter. Another leap from G. Chasing them to the ends of the earth. Now he'll back off and should be able to escape. Yeah, the stock has so much chasing power. And he's just, he's so good if the fight isn't 5v5. Like, as soon as the fight turns into 2v3 or just as soon as the enemy team scatters, that's where Slark really and, has a and, field and day. And not to mention, Slark, that fight lasted so long. I think it's about uh, one, and a half, one minute and a half. The more at right picks you get, the more agility you have. So if the fight goes on longer, Slark deals a lot more damage. And the more time you get to spam your nukes as well. Pounce has a an 8 second cooldown, yeah. Dark Pact. Very, has, very short cooldown. And low mana cost too. And we've seen G just abusing that throughout these fights. And yeah, for IG. One thing, is, one, one thing is for sure, 1427 needs more mana. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely was frustrating to watch. Where he's just chasing with 120 mana. Had one extra stick charge right after he used the magic wand, but... Just couldn't get off that last burst strike. It worked out yeah. okay in the end, though. Arcane Boots is like the one of the most important items any support would want to have at the early phase. I can't really blame him for going for an urn because with a, when you have a Slark on your team, you can just find kills all over the map. But yeah, of course, not the... to mention combination of Dark Seer plus Slark is really, really potent. And G's gonna look to continue farming the middle lane. Just so confident to sit in the middle of the lane and farm. Doesn't have any backup nearby. He's slark. If he, he he casts his dark pack fast, he almost cancels. Uh, he cancels telekinesis and the torrent slow. I, apart from the X mark. Yeah, the X is the only thing that you don't remove. But I mean, end of the day, X by itself is not enough to get a kill. And certainly not at this yeah. stage of the game for IG. So what do they do? The, the, the fact the fact of them them having a Rubik plus Shadow Demon doesn't help the cause of them trying to kill the slark. It does remind me a lot of game one where IG... They can't kill anyone. Trian, Protector, Enchantress. Yeah, I mean, it's not that their supports are useless this game. It's more just they really need to make something happen as a team. Because right now you're giving away free farm to Gyrocopter and a Slark who's getting a fantastic snowballing start. 3-0-3. Three, and, three. and LGD have the better late game utility heroes. Sand King, Darkseer, massive AoE, and Chen. Yeah, Sand King plus Darkseer is really, really strong late game. And it sets up, it synergizes so well with the gyrocopter too. 
Massive I guess, AoE. I guess you could say Shadow Demon is really strong later on as well. And Rubik is sort of the utility support where he can deal unpredicted amount of damage to you later on, depending on what spell he steals and when he uses it. Yeah, the, sh the one issue for me is Shadow Demon is really strong later on, but he's not that good against Gyrocopter. He's okay against Slark, but not really that great either, because your Dark Pack... I think he's, he'll be useful for the Morphling, since they can create a lot of illusions to hit towers. That's true, but offensively he won't do a whole lot. G, uh, Dark Pack's there, immediately okay. leaps away. As long as you just keep on spamming it, you pretty much can't die. Yeah, it's really difficult for him to die, and he's even going to get a Blacking Bar as his first choice of item. And once that BKB is up, that means Pycat BKB of his own coming soon. If LGDN want to fight, they certainly have that luxury. With double BKB, I actually don't know what IG does against that. They have no real solution. They like... actually I, are going for three BKBs. Rex is also building one himself. Uh, and then meanwhile, mid lane G is going to come in. He's got an Invisor to leap in. He catches Faith. The Century War was there, but still Faith held in place. The, the boat's boat coming in. This could be a big boat. Catches out too. Now something stolen by a Rubik Chuan. Able to steal the, the flat cannon. Not ideal flat for cannon. him. While it's happening, G on the run. G will melt, mm. and Pycat just chipping away from long range. One for one, they lose the Slark in exchange for yeah, a Shadow they lose Demon. The clock as well. While that was happening, it looks like 1437 yeah. finds the clockwork in the middle of nowhere. The and now a buyback from the Slark. They want to fight. Joe waves away to the low ground. We'll be able to escape for the time being. Teleport's coming in, but Chuan gets caught. There's G leading the way. The buyback already off to a pretty good start. Can he find some additional kills? He's thinking of a leap, but it's a long way to go. And he, he won't commit so in the end. so much damage with the Iron Shell on him. It's so much burst damage. When you stack the Iron Shell on top of uh, the Dark Pack, the Leap, it's like an instant 600 to 700 Duke damage in a matter uh, of seconds. Tell, tell that to the Shadow Demon and the Rubik. See what they feel about it. The Shadow Demon, the crazy thing, Winter, is he even got off Disruption. Like, right away. As soon as he saw the Slark coming in, he self-disrupts. But the problem was, he had already taken a massive amount of damage. Yeah, there was the call down and the flat cannon from the Gyro. Chuan really wanted to steal the call down, but he didn't. I, th get it. I thought he did for a second. <laughs> second. That's definitely flat cannon. Not ideal. Yeah, I unless you want to find out some DPS, cool DPS items on your Rubik. Well, Chuan's not. He's not doing too well if that's his goal. He's got some cool cosmetics, but the DPS items are a little lacking. <laughs> Mo the Mopling won't be happy if he's trying to farm out DPS items on his Ruby. And as for IG, they're just gonna sit back and defend the middle lane, and this is Q for LGD with the double BKBs. The nice thing about these is it frees them up to split push a little bit more safely if they want to. They don't have to fight, we'll see if they choose to. Uh, or sorry, the second BKB is not up yet, but it is coming soon for G, and they'll look to yeah, farm that they, right now. They, will, they are actually building three BKBs because they want the three core heroes to survive the fight so that they can drop their primary spells, especially the Dark Seer, to drop his ultimate in the fights. They have so much burst damage that they just he just wants they just want the Dark Seer to be able to survive the fight by building a BKB. I'm just watching Zhou run away from home after haste it up. In the end, they will kill it off in time, but again for LGD it doesn't feel like there's any sense I, of urgency. Yeah, I think all the games we've in this series, all the carries are getting backing bar as the first items. It's almost overkill, I feel. Heroes like Darkseer, do you really need a BKB in this game? There's not that many stuns. Um, I think he's really worried that he would die in the fight. Because they have a lot of spells that can kill him really fast. Well, there is a mech, and, there is a not, hand of God. And not to mention, I think the primary concern of him is, is he needs to stand in front. And if he gets X mark into a torrent and, and a ghost ship, past the telekinesis, he would not be able to do anything. So getting a BKB is for him to avoid those stuff happening. Well, for the time being, it's not happening because IG aren't engaging. They're just sitting at this tower with three, four heroes while G farms bottom, somebody both, else both goes top. Both teams are con contented by trading farms because bo both have good late game potential. Well, IG, they've got the BKB of Morphling, and apparently this is Q to go. While this is happening, we'll see Slark teleport in. Immediately gets caught by a tour. G didn't get off the Dark Pact in time. It won't matter, though. They defend the tower. Both teams. It feels like a pub game. Ten heroes just sitting mid, nobody committing to a tower. It's it's the uh, good old ten man Dota game. It's what happens actually in low level uh, pub uh, games. It actually <laughs> happens at the top lane last time. Now it's transitioned to the mid lane. Yeah.
especially if you just want to be a dick to whoever's soloing mid. Just keep on ganking the lane. Just sit there and camp so he can't farm. It's not fun. Yeah, you, then you just annoy them, then they'll just go to the jungle or something like that. <laughs> but IG is going to opt to find the opening Please with the smoke. Oh. They need to use the smoke. They can't just go from the frontal point of the tower to just...